So let's now look at biotic and abiotic factors in an ecosystem. Now when we are studying ecosystems, we are going to concern ourselves with the different levels of organization. And we're going to use this picture to explain these different levels. Well the first level is if we just have one single living thing. A simplest single living thing called an organism. And in this picture our organism is just our sea otter. It is a single living thing surviving in the region it lives, in this case the ocean, just one particular sea otter. Now we might be concerned about that particular sea otter or that particular organism, but we may want to look at the other organisms, combine them together. This is what we then consider a population. So multiple sea otters or multiple types of organisms of the same species that share a habitat. And that's the important point, same species. They're all sea otters. Now within a habitat, there are many different types of organisms and many different types of populations. When we combine our populations together and we start looking at all of the populations, now we're looking at a community. So all of the populations in a particular area that interact they may interact by being food, they may interact by being a predator or a prey, but all of these populations in a particular area that interact with each other. So that's the plants, that's the animals, all of the things living together. Now these living components, these community components, can't survive without the non-living environment. And when we combine the living with the non-living, now we're considering an ecosystem. And so if we go back to our original picture, we started with a single sea otter, a single organism. We work our way up to a population, multiple sea otters. We can look at a community, the sea otters, along with other living components. And then we consider the ecosystem, which is the living and non-living. And in this case, the non-living would be the water and the sun. In this picture, we get a good idea. We work our way up the levels, we get more complex. If we went one step further and looked at all of the ecosystems together on Earth, now what we're considering is the biosphere. And a biosphere is everything on Earth, all of the area where both living and non-living things are found. So we're talking about things such as the soil, the atmosphere, the ocean, so our biosphere. Biotic factors are all of the living components in an ecosystem. So things that are living. So things such as plants, fish, it could be invertebrates, it could be all the way down to a single celled organism, these living components. Now when we're considering biotic factors, we also have to consider things that were once living, such as a leaf or a branch. They came from something that are living, they may be dead, but they were once living, they are considered biotic factors. Now if something was never alive or isn't living, then it's considered abiotic factor. And the abiotic factors are the non-living components, both the physical and chemical components of an environment. So things such as temperature, wind, water, sunlight, oxygen, all of these things together are important factors and they're non-living abiotic factors in an ecosystem. Now these biotic and abiotic factors are always working together with each other and they may be changing as well. And these factors that influence each other and this constant change is what we call a dynamic equilibrium. So there might be more water or less sunlight or more fish or less plants and we call this the dynamic equilibrium. This constantly changing balance within an ecosystem. Now sometimes we have an ecosystem that has all these factors, but there's a single critical factor. It's called the limiting factor. And it is a factor that is the most important, the most critical in determining the type of organism that exists in an ecosystem. And there's many examples of limiting factors. One example is the Douglas fir. And Douglas firs only grow in an area where there's a high annual rainfall. So it's a limiting factor. The amount of rain determines where the Douglas firs will grow. The other factors are important, but if the level of rain 
was not high, we would not have Douglas firs. So these components, both biotic and abiotic, working together are a key component when we start to analyze ecosystems.